So hello everyone. Thank you uh, for participating in this webinar. I hope you can all uh, hear me clearly. Welcome. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for uh, participating in this webinar offered by the European School Education Platform at the European Commission's uh, platform uh, for school education in Europe. Uh, my name is Maria Lena and I will be coordinating today's webinar. So uh, for this webinar, we have invited uh, Giuseppina Canella. As you can see, <laughs> hello Giuseppina. Uh, Giuseppina Jose Mangione and uh, Stefania Zipa, uh, who currently work at the research institution Indire in Italy. So uh, their uh, research, research background, excuse me, and their involvement in uh, reports concerning rural schools will provide us with many important and useful uh, information on how technology and innovation can uh, support the work of teachers who teach in rural areas. Uh, we have also invited uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Salvador Paez, uh, who himself was a teacher uh, in a rural school uh, in, uh, in Spain, and uh, he will give us uh, some insights from his own personal experience. So overall, uh, this webinar, in this webinar, our speakers will focus on the profile of small rural schools in Europe and the role, and the role of internationalization actions uh, to booster innovation processes in schools. I invite you to stay with us towards the end of the webinar to learn more about uh, the upcoming events on the European School Education Platform. And before we begin, I would like to uh, mention that uh, towards the end of uh, this webinar, we will serve with you a survey, which we kindly invite you to fill in and tell us your opinion about this webinar. And uh, of course, please feel free to use the chat to post any questions, share, uh, share your thoughts uh, or any concerns uh, during the webinar. Uh, with no further delays, I will give uh, the floor to uh, Giuseppina Canello first. Thank you, everyone. So, I uh, and good afternoon to everyone, and uh, thank you for the invitation to the European School Net and, uh, of course, to the uh, European Commission platform. I would like to share my, our presentation, um, which uh, is a sort of a summary of. Um, our research activity with the small and rural schools or about small and rural schools. Just a second, I start from the beginning. Our presentation will focus on uh, uh, the research activity that indeed uh, the National Institution for Research Education in Italy uh, dedicated to this topic. And uh, um, for a couple of years, we have been working with the European School Net to this uh, uh, focus, to this topic, specific topic. Our uh, team for this uh, uh, activity is made of uh, um, Jose Mangione, who is also the leader of this uh, research team, myself and Stefania Kipa. And for this specific activity, uh, UN, um, let's say, um, allowed us to be supported by Christos Buzalos. Um, so uh, the presentation is uh, divided into three parts because we would like to share with you the first findings about this research um, that uh, um, will give you more details and also information about what uh, uh, the profile of small and rural school is in Europe and uh, their challenges and also the opportunity to teach in this context. Uh, finally, we would like to present uh, the opportunity to um, design a manifesto, to produce a manifesto that could uh, be an umbrella tool um, under which uh, uh, all the European schools uh, uh, um, localized in rural context could work together. So the first uh, mentee to, to ice break, Stefania, should I interrupt my presentation? And uh, I will give you the shell to yeah. propose our first ice yeah, breaking. We would like to to ask you 
um, to participate to this, just uh, to be aware of your um, country and to give uh, each other the participation of the audience. So if you put, put, go to the menti.com website and including the box, the um, menti code, which you can read in the top of the, of the slide or 76882629. And in, insert and write a keyword that identify your small and rural school. How would you describe it? How would you, um, yes, um, talk about it to other that don't know small and rural schools in a word, of course. So don't be shy and please uh, participate. OK, I, I see that somebody is writing on the chat, but uh, we would like to ask you that uh, it's better to share your, your opinion, to go to menti.com using your um, telephone and include the, the code that you can see in the top of the slide. In this way, we can see all together. OK, I see. OK. Fine. So, motivated, local, isolated, autonomous, small, of course, heartwarming, cause invitation. So, some of these words. Okay, thank you, Maria Elena. Um, few children you will find it in the presentation later on in the research uh, let's say dimension that we identified uh, green community this is a key word really and also local culture locality is another key words for us uh, for our research bad connection so ict is uh, the the, yeah, the main way, the main tools to overcome this isolation, for example. I see also a, a, um, a word that I don't know, Jesu Belerma, but probably was. Uh, okay. If somebody knows could and could write the, the English, if they, there is a corresponding. So a couple of minutes more, and then we will move again to this uh, wonderful um, I, let's say uh, this this moment, let's say the vice breaking family, another um, word that recurred uh, many times in in our interview and research, family feeling. Uh, innovative also, mobility I see somewhere, then uh, not enough, enough funding, also true, also either in Italy and in other countries, in European, other European countries. So I see, uh, uh, I realize that we, we share the same, let's say, framework, the same perception of what uh, uh, small and rural school means, uh, because from our side, from the Italian perception, I mean experience, we have the same uh, feeling uh, while talking about uh, uh, rural schools, isolated rural schools. So probably we can move ahead and then we can share later on this, uh, the final, uh, how many participants Proposed their keywords, 31, I see. Uh, 50, uh, 56 res responses, so. So if you agree, I will move ahead to the description of, uh, of the um, research activity and the 
report so as we can involve our our audience uh, into their uh, into our activities collaboration i see open minded few students also mountain mountain areas small population anyway i i think that we really share the same uh, let's say in, in imaginative uh, context the same framework where we work uh, when we talk about uh, small and rural schools so i should um, open classroom classes i see i read in a chat i would uh, uh, share so if you stop sharing i will oh, isolated areas thank you thank you for your suggestion and keywords community limited resource in terms of staff not global Also, this is, could be interesting. OK, then I move again to after this very short ice breaking to the presentation. So uh, as you can see, all of us share the same feeling when we talk about small and rural school. And uh, uh, the same feeling, the same keywords we identify in collecting, in gathering evidence from Indira Reserve activity where we um, let's say describe it or uh, after a long time of research uh, we identify the small and rural school as uh, um, school that are based in peripheral areas isolated as either in cultural approach let's say cultural opportunity and for educational um, educational activity for example or socio-economical deprivation um but the um, the context the local context is in many study in many uh, um in many research uh, is considered very important uh, in the despite the disconnection from their locality uh, they remain the school remain anchored in communities so the relation between school and community is very strong is particularly true for small and rural school and also um, they can be asset, the school can be asset for the communities and center for innovation. Um, at the end of our, um, after a certain time, uh, our research activity, we would like to investigate it also the situation in Europe and um, propose our, um, to, to to investigate what are the problem and the challenging uh, uh, scenario that the small and rural school in Europe uh, are faced. And so we, um, just a sec, okay. Uh, we worked with um, European School Net to identify, to create a special interest group uh, and in 2020-2021, we launched a survey, we ran a survey to um, identify and define the profile of small and rural school in Europe. This uh, um, survey confirmed that uh, none of the countries have systemic action uh, in terms of specific training for newly hired teacher or for in-service uh, teacher. Um, just some countries have activated initiative to address uh, to the school uh, based in rural areas and uh, moreover to to aspect that uh, uh, we found also in uh, in Italy of course where the, the, the multi age classroom and the use of ICT to overcome isolation basically um, participating in e twinning projects and uh, um, Erasmus plus project. And uh, many of the respondents uh, were interested in participating in the reflection group in the SIG, uh, European SIG, UN SIG. Uh, to do what? To, for example, uh, share experience uh, and practices um, via using a case study 
um, or, for example, elaborating to kids uh, to be shared uh, one another um, between the schools or organizing a capacity building program in terms of potential MOOC. And finally, uh, to open a, a community of practice, uh, as we did uh, in Italy with the manifesto that uh, we will discuss later on uh, by the end of the presentation, a manifesto that is based on three main pillars, which are the communities of memory, the multi-age classroom as a resource and not a limit, and the, the use of technology as a way of social inclusion. So this is our, mm, let's say, objective, our, uh, our objective with the um, special interest group. And uh, the first step to, towards this was the production, the, the uh, design of a, a research report that you can find and download from European School Net website, um, where we, we produced also a summary of the report and a, a book of monography, 19 monography, um, that focalize each uh, school in participating in this uh, research activity. And in fact, the SIG. Uh, participant countries, um, let's say, proposed two schools per country to be part of the sample of the research activity. And here you can see the list uh, of the school that participated in, in this investigation. Uh, we used the content analysis um, approach uh, and uh, designed a documentation protocol so as to um, frame the challenges and opportunity for small and rural school EU in Europe. We followed a phenomenological transformative approach and identify four dimensions and sub-dimensions. And uh, in a while, we will talk about it in more detail. St we started um, identify the units of thematic analysis because our main um, objective aim was to obtain exemplary knowledge. Um, my colleague in a while will, will get into um, in, in, in detail in, into the description of the dimension and what the dimension um, gave us. But just to give you some hints about that, uh, um, I can say that uh, the dimension were the leadership and management, the system innovation, the teaching practices, and the use of ICT as inclusive tool. Uh, as I said, they were divided into sub dimension, which are listed uh, in front of you, and they were, let's say, obtained uh, mm, uh, after the. Um, to um, according to the protocol, to the documentation protocol, which was based on a documentation sheet and a semi-structured remote video interview. Thanks to these two moments, two steps, we um, produced a monography for each school uh, where uh, we highlighted the organizational and system solution in order to describe the innovative um, model of the school and the, the innovative aspect that each school uh, had to be shared with the, the community of small and rural school. Why? Fine. I am ready to move to the end of the presentation, my part, and to uh, give the shelf to Stefania, I think, to the second part um, and to the description of uh, the dimension in detail. But before, uh, let's say, get into detail, we would like to involve you in a one more menti. So go again. OK, go again into the um, menti.com and yeah. Someone has okay, already Stefania. started. Uh, the shelf to, is yours. To, ah, thank you, Josie. I was not. Um, I, I didn't want to interrupt you, but just to to tell that someone has already uh, start uh, responding to the question to menti.com, and we have some places uh, represented here in our in this kind of uh, uh, map of. Uh, 
Uh, that also that internet connection. Mm, no, okay. <laughs> Someone has misunderstood. Yeah, mm, we were asked you just to type uh, the place, the, the name of the country, where are you from? So we see Germany, Spain, Croatia, Greece, Serbia, uh, Italy, uh, a part of Leon, uh, as Spain, so is a place in Spain, a, um, a region of the Spain. Um, so North Macedonia and France, we can see. So uh, the places we uh, uh, involved, uh, the countries involved in our um, research. Uh, so we are very pleased and we hope that someone, uh, uh, some teacher uh, we interviewed during the research is here to, to listen and to participate. Um, yeah, many places here. Uh, so please uh, feel free to, we have now uh, 38 responses, 40. Please feel free to fill in uh, the dementi.com uh, while I um, uh, pass to the presentation. So uh, while I'm talking to the other, to the principal findings of the research, you can uh, you can uh, go on typing, go on entering your answering here because the menti is open so i will go to to um, to share uh, my pres the presentation i hope that everyone can see uh, better so now we move um, to to the findings and as uh, juicy already said um, we analyzed four dimensions uh, and as for the first dimension, so system innovation, which is uh, the innovation of the school system, um, we um, uh, we focus on three uh, sub dimensions. So the parents' role, so the, the degree of participation of the families in the life of the schools, but also the collaboration between schools and uh, between school and the local communities around. Uh, those are very important to know if the schools, for example, uh, are working together uh, and share the, their teaching activities. Uh, and this is, it's important also for professional development. And the collaboration with local communities, in particular, uh, looking at the collaboration among schools and municipalities and third sectors. So in, uh, just to know the main benefits and the kind of alliances they use it uh, for this collaboration. Yeah, here you can see some um, pictures uh, of some experiences we have collected. So uh, regarding this dimension, so the, in, the, the, the innovation in the school system, and you can see, for example, uh, starting from the top left, uh, an example of an outdoor public space used by, by a school. So it's not a, a space uh, uh, inside the, the um, the school, but it's outside, is, is a public, so the, the a school is using a, a space uh, of the municipality. Uh, on the top right, you can see uh, an example of a classroom set up as a lab laboratory where parents can be involved, for example, for curricular activities. And on the bottom right, you can see an example of a library, a school library, which is used also by the community. So uh, in those places uh, where uh, there's no public library for the community, the school library can, um, can be used uh, in this way. 
And in fact, if you, we move here, you can find some uh, quotes from the from what the school said during the interviews and during and feel and when they uh, filled the documentation sheet. Um, you can see, for example, uh, some some quotes for uh, the parents' role and. We found that uh, in, uh, in smaller rural schools, families, the, the um, uh, schools are very connected with the communities. And so families are very uh, are deep involved into curricular activities. So they propose um, uh, um, teaching activities in combination in team with the teachers. And they also organize some services. For example, here, uh, a school uh, parents they um, they support the school with this uh, walking bus service, uh, which is the um, the parents that walk in children at school. They their own children, but also the children of other families. But also parents can give financial support uh, and. Sometimes, but it's not very, uh, very used, they can um, uh, compose a, a, a formal parents association. Um, as for the collaboration uh, among schools, we found that um, in the smaller rural school, the collaboration is founded very important because for example, some schools have uh, experienced the lack of language teachers. So if they work, schools work in a country, in a region, if they work together, they can uh, supply uh, this lack of language teachers. And also, for example, um, very interesting is this experience on, on reported on the top uh, le of, on the top la right of the peri peripatetic teachers. Uh, this is an, ex an experience uh, we found uh, in Malta. Uh, it's a, a group of teachers that um, are specialized in some subjects, for example, arts, drama, and music, and they spend one or two days in each school of the area. So the school of the area can benefit uh, of this. Yeah, it's Stefania, we miss your voice. We we lost you. Mm -mm. Again, Stefania, please. Again, okay. Uh, okay. Now okay, we, so we hear you because the yeah the um, yeah the present the line is for, sorry for the connection and um, yeah you can see now the presentation. Yes. Sorry about that. Yes, and also yeah sharing the experiences. So it's more, so um, very important. Um, yeah, the national networks uh, are important also for uh, um, to to create a, a kind of a community of practice. So, uh, teacher teachers, for example, in France, they have a kind of formal uh, community of practice uh, supported by the municipality, and they can share their experiences. Uh, as for the international networks, all the schools uh, they uh, all the schools uh, interviewed they highlighted the importance of, of being connected at uh, an international level, at European but but also international. But they experience uh, uh, the the um, they need some uh, some uh, difficulties. For example, in having uh, the same timetable. 
for for example for organizing organizing te uh, teaching activities in common they uh, do have a, do share the same timetable do the same for example subject at the same time and this is a difficulties uh, i don't know because ah oh, okay i have the stable connection here i don't use the wi-fi so i don't know sorry for that and also the um, ICT competencies, uh, for example, they experience some difficulties in having um, digital competencies and also digi um, uh, the technological equipment. Uh, as for the collaboration with local communities, um, here you can find some quotes. Uh, uh, so we mentioned the school libraries open to the communities and also public libraries that are open to the school uh, for curricular activities, but also the local community can support financially the schools and also uh, they can give students uh, the possibility to experience uh, and do some, some uh, activities uh, in order to uh, meet and to prepare young people for the world uh, of tomorrow. Um, teaching practice is most very important to uh, sub dimension space and time organization and also the management of the classroom. So in order to uh, help teachers to reach high levels of students attention and, and best performances. Here again, some uh, uh, pictures from uh, uh, the experiences, uh, the experiences you can see uh, how the classes uh, um, are equipped in for using, uh, for example, uh, flexible furniture. Uh, you can see them uh, in three pictures here. Um, and it's very useful for supporting, for example, multi-age classrooms. Uh, small schools uh, work a lot with using uh, activities, differentiated activities uh, and activities, activities for, for small uh, groups, so to meet the needs of every student. And also they use the environment around, so the school does not finish uh, on the gate, but uh, it uses also the surroundings, uh, which are very beautiful, uh, and so the nature uh, around, so rivers uh, and gardens uh, around. So um, here you can find uh, some quotes again from what they said. Uh, and for flexibility of spaces, for example, you can see that uh, in the majority of the schools, they experience uh, uh, class, the space of the classes uh, the classrooms are uh, organized in corners, so are multi-purpose. So they can uh, have uh, corners for, uh, 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 for example, doing some uh, um, arts or playrooms, uh, um, or they have um, they use also the corridors uh, um, close to the classrooms in order to expand uh, the spaces and they use also the time as a kind of flexible um, item so uh, the timetable is uh, uh, arranged by every teacher in order to meet the as we said before, the, the needs of every, every students, especially when they have to manage the multi-age classrooms. And they also use uh, outdoor spaces and uh, libraries, public libraries, in order to uh, enlarge, uh, to have a, a, a very large and rich uh, um, uh, learning environment. Uh, going deeply to the end of this part, uh, um, yeah, the, the multi-age classrooms are a, a challenge for the rural schools. So teachers need to um, require specific additional training to manage them. They, they have to work harder and they 
they use, for example, they experience uh, a, a rich uh, way of, of um, um, which of using the, the curriculum. So they use the parallel, but also spiral, which is most used. And you have spiral, for example, when you don't repeat the same, uh, um, the same content uh, for every age of students, but you go deep and deep. Uh, and you, you choose the topic and you go deep uh, in, um, in experimenting it. And, um, and also uh, one of the most important thing is to recognize, it's recognized by the, the smaller rural school in Europe, the role of the ICT to overcome isolation. So uh, they use uh, very much the, um, the outdoor spaces around, but they also use distance learning, for example, uh, and the technology to, um, to meet students and classrooms from uh, other parts of the country, and also from other parts of the, um, of the world. And, in order to uh, to make uh, the the social uh, environment riches more rich, so um, I pass the floor now to thank, thank you, you very, very much, much and pass, pass the floor the now to Jose. Thank you, Stefania. Um, the the dimension of ICT as inclusive tools was divided into specific subdimensions to guide the qualitative investigation, remote teaching and distant learning. The literature defined remote teaching as a temporary shift from the normal modes of teaching using ICT for introducing a digital education and uh, uh, the distant learning is uh, a form of education that uh, happens uh, at a distance uh, rather than within uh, the classroom setting to leverage technology and provide students with the opportunity to earn a degree to attend uh, schools uh, without having to be in academic setting. And in this picture you can uh, see the code book uh, realized and uh, the code associated to remote teaching and distance learning. You can go. And uh, uh, we can see the, the picture of uh, the context of school that integrate uh, ICT in your setting, laptop, uh, iPhone, and uh, I will report and discuss some of the thematic codes that emerged from the units of analyze identified uh, for this dimension. You can go. And uh, for example, for remote teaching, the remote teaching environments and tools uh, support instructional differentiation and uh, to ensure educational inclusion of children in problematic uh, territories uh, or the parental participation is uh, supported through sharing educational materials and uh, uh, the remote teaching experience allows schools to overcome situation of class group isolation while also enabling, enabling them to ensure educational continuity. About uh, distance, um, distance learning, uh, maybe the main choice in temporary emergency situation, but uh, uh, it does lead to more widespread students isolation, especially for uh, those who live in highly disconnected areas. For example, distance education has fostered the development of a standard form of learning e-classes, uh, have become one of the standard form of education and, and the school have already experienced the network uh, twinning, for example, uh, a twinning project or uh, Erasmus project and the teacher mo mobi mobility focuses on the use of ICT. Distance education include uh, in these small schools uh, support uh, the differentiation uh, and personalization uh, is experimented uh, within the cases of homeschooling, uh, healthcare requirements of isolation due to the disruption of transport rules. 
School have reported that distance teaching promotes the development of self-regulation in learning and support the independence of the students. Um, you can go on. Um, at the least, the dimension uh, leadership and management uh, is divided into three specific sub dimension units of analysis that guide the content analysis process school vision, team teaching, and team work, and organization and management of building. Uh, in this picture, you can see you can map the code with the specific sub dimension the code of school vision, the code of team teaching and team working, and the code of organization and management. And uh, I report and discuss some of the thematic code that emerged for the units of analysis identified for the dimension. You can go on. Um, the European small and rural schools have developed a clear and articulated educational vision, uh, as confirmed by research. That uh, the presence of a clear vision can inspire the behavior of students, teachers, and families. And for example, most of the vision focus on the concept of occurring differentiation. The school have a main goal to ensure students equal opportunities, and some occurring differentiation vision plays emphasis on the concept of solidarity. The second most reported type of school vision is that of the school for life. In this school, the main goal is to prepare students for, uh, for the future. And uh, the other vision uh, are common of the European small and rural school, the places and places, school to, li to live, digital schools, and eco, -school, eco schools. And um, for team teaching and teamwork, the schools um, have reported different form of team organization and the attribution of rules and the responsibilities. For example, in small schools, there are groups of uh, pedagogical guides who support the organization and implementation of the curriculum, as well as teaching assistance for children with difficulties. The school reports how the organization of teachers into team provides support for specific grade and school levels, as well to disciplinary cooperation and the exchange of good practices. And in isolated uh, schools, teachers working our maybe organizations was to able to work in the most distance, distance location. In some cases, the possibility for teachers to rotate between various locations and classes has been formalized through swapping, swapping models or um, uh, peripatetic teachers. And uh, about uh, buildings uh, in the small rural schools, uh, um, the problems uh, are the size, the school size, and the building spaces, uh, which in many cases are located very far from the main cities so, or very far from each other. And uh, many of the schools manage uh, once the light school building or main school building associated with uh, some satellite school buildings. Um, the use of satellite school buildings requires the school leader to cope different issues related to school timetable and transportation. Dispersed the school buildings have impact. Uh, Jose, we, we, we lost you. Uh, we have a small Hello? issue with the sound. Maybe try mm -hmm. to turn off the microphone and uh, turn it on again. Jose? Uh, okay. Uh, due to very low number of students uh, enrolled on dispersed across various buildings, each school many may not be equipped with digital device uh, or teaching tools uh, of the same standard. And in many cases, Okay, remarks.
Yeah, uh, sorry, we, we have some problems with the connection, but we have uh, reached the final remarks. So, Juzi, if you prefer, I can show yes, just share to, the presentation. OK, so just to um, finally uh, ask you if you think that uh, um, a manifesto, a common manifesto for uh, the European uh, small and rural school could be uh, useful and could be uh, the tool, the umbrella tool that uh, um, led us, could, could lead us to uh, create a community of practice and could be the first step to create a community of practice. So I, we would like to launch another, the last one, Menti, um, because uh, uh, the, the time is over. And uh, I will share with you the, um, let's say, the, the image uh, where the Menti is. And I invite you to connect to menti.com and um, you will see a, a sentence asking to what could be the pillars we would like to include in a European manifesto for small and rural schools. And uh, we will propose you five choices. Uh, they are um, put uh, not in uh, hierarchical order, but they are included uh, just uh, as they are. Um, for example, if you strongly agree or disagree with collaboration with community, with management of multi-age classroom as a uh, focus, a topic to be discussed among a community of small and rural school teacher. OK, I share with you the um, what is going on in uh, in uh, Menti. OK, could you see it? Stefania, well. yes, yeah. we can okay. see. OK, so. We have to um, parallel to uh, collaboration with community and alliance with family, and uh, the same with the same uh, score. Then we have play the, the the consideration the regarding a small and rural school with as place of innovation. So we could be a community of practice, a community of research together to improve the condition or to work together towards uh, um, innovation in small and rural schools. And the, the number of respondents uh, are, sorry, I don't see it, just to see, be sure that. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the first. The, the same, mm. yeah, uh, collaboration okay. with the communities. No, now ICT is uh, <laughs> so the leader. on the top. Yeah. Um, and then on the second, uh, the collaboration with communities and alliance with family. And okay, the last is, uh, is mm -hmm. multi age. Is not so as exactly. Mm. So I will say that we will pass the shelf to Salvador. So as we can close uh, uh, with this, um, let's say, picture with this idea to work together. But if you would like to go on, um, let's say, participating in this menti, we will leave open and uh, at the complete end of this on the webinar, we can share with you again. Uh, if uh, just in case uh, the 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 it it could be changed, let's say the uh, the ranking could be changed. And, and okay. We can also send the pictures of this menti okay. or the also, menti to the organizers so they can share with the uh, with you uh, thanks, the final yes. results. That's okay. a nice idea. <laughs> okay, let's uh, proceed with uh, Salvador. And mm -hmm. you can keep the Mentimeter open and maybe uh, leave one, two minutes at the end if we have time oh. to see it. Yes. So, um, great. Uh, Salvador, probably on the on the upper left corner of your, of your uh, screen, you can see the take control. Mm -hmm. Please uh, yeah. press this button so that yes, you can yes, navigate moment, through please. the... Yes. Uh... One moment, please. 
Yes, it's here. No, one moment, please. Mm. If it doesn't work, I can uh, navigate. Uh, um. Uh, let me let me share no, no. once again if you want. Okay, uh, Salvador, can you see now the presentation? It is uploaded. Can you hear me? I think we lost him, Maria. We lost him. Okay, Don't maybe. Move. Again, it's a live stream. Uh, we are really sorry for uh, the technical issues we are encountering. Uh, maybe uh, give him one, two minutes to reconnect. I can uh, briefly mention that he, uh, that Salvador will uh, uh, let us know about the challenges and the possibilities that a rural school uh, can, um, uh, can face in reality. Because as uh, we mentioned in the beginning of this webinar, He's an experienced teacher. He uh, he worked uh, in a rural school and he has collaborated with uh, many teachers of the twinning community. And um, he will uh, present us some examples of how they uh, um, how they uh, they the challenges they faced and they and how they overcame those uh, challenges as a small and a rural school in Spain. Uh, he will present some examples of the um, uh, projects he did within the e-twinning community and uh, he will share some uh, insights on how uh, other teachers could uh, could be uh, could find useful information and how they could uh, also address the, uh, those the, the issues that a, a rural school may may face um I would suggest to wait uh, a few seconds. Um, if not, yeah, I'm, I'm you will looking. always uh, you, you will be able to find his presentation on the web on the webinars page on EZEP. We will share it with you, and uh, you will also uh, be able to navigate through it. Uh, you can already navigate through it, I believe. So you can take a look at uh, what Salvador wanted to present and uh, once again we are really sorry technical issues on online streamings cannot be predicted so we always try our best to work on those yeah um, meanwhile since we still have uh before five a uh, bit of time uh, I just wanted to mention that we received quite many comments uh, and positive reactions for what was presented by uh, our researchers. So I hope you're reading the chat and I think you're doing it because I, I see that you are replying to, to some of them. So it, it's really nice also to see what is going on on the chat. Uh, I just wanted to mention it for uh, Giuseppina Stefania, who just presented. And yeah, maybe uh, Maria Elena, uh, I can share the evaluation form and we can remind our participants that they can save the link that I'm posting now in the chat. Meanwhile, because, while, yeah. sorry, Marta, while Marta is sharing with you the um, the evaluation form, I can share with you our upcoming events on uh, European School Education Platform. I hope you can all see them. I think you can even uh, click on the different links and explore a bit uh, the different um, professional development uh, offers that uh, we have on the European School Education Platform and uh, some e-twinning events. If you're not an e-twinner yet, uh, please uh, feel free to um, explore the e-twinning project and explore its purpose. Um, 
Okay, I think we are running out of time here. We have uh, four minutes left, so maybe... Hello, hi everyone. Uh, maybe you can share with us any questions or if I can share uh, something that I found interesting during uh, your presentation. Can I? Okay, I will share. Uh, I, I note down the <laughs> traditional way my remarks. So I, I found very interesting how creative an, a teacher can be when there is uh, the need to adjust and adapt in uh, specific circumstances. Uh, teachers can be can become very creative with uh, the sources they the, with the resources they have because we know sometimes that uh, school schools in rural areas they are um, they are not funded they don't have the necessary resources and they uh, let's say that teachers have to find uh, different ways uh, to to teach their students and. Um, to adjust their classrooms, to adjust their time slots, to, ad to adjust uh, the material they have. And I found it really interesting that uh, um, indeed teachers can become very creative. I don't know if uh, Giuseppina, Stefania, do you have something to say on that, to comment on that? Probably we can just add or ask to the, to the audience, but uh, uh, Generally speaking, teachers are really, as you say, very creative. Uh, I mean, in in all the contexts, schools that you can imagine, probably going back to your school experience. But in a small and rural school, they are even more uh, creative because they, um, let's say, need to adapt to the small number of students, to the different age of students in a classroom. So they need to manipulate uh, the, um, the curriculum to, uh, for example, as Stefania uh, described it, to use the outside the playground of the school or to, the, to use the, the space uh, uh, outside the school uh, as we see the, the, the river, the, uh, etc. So they are very, very creative. And in this place, we have observed uh, even more. Stefania or Jose, I don't know if they want to add something. Yeah, you. another example could be, for example, uh, the participation in uh, a twinning project. Uh, I'm sorry now, uh, Salvador is not here, but uh, small schools, uh, they found very interesting in participating in this kind of project uh, uh, provided by the European uh, community. Uh, it's, it's a way uh, it, it, to, to find, to solve the problem, for example, of lack of resources for language uh, teachers, because it's a way uh, they use the, the twinning project uh, to, to give students the, uh, the possibility to, to experience language for, from uh, other parts of the Europe, and also to, for example, for sharing a kind of a community of practice. So for, for teachers experiencing isolation uh, for their professional development, it's also a way to uh, meet other colleagues uh, and share their experiences and their um, issues uh, and, and find uh, and find solution for their problems. So uh, the collaboration uh, among teachers, among Europe, and also using the tools that the Europe uh, can provide to 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 small and rural schools can be a benefit for uh, for everyone. Great, thank you. Um, I don't see any other comments in the chat or questions. And since it's uh, five o'clock, sir, um, we can conclude here. And thank you for that, for the, for this uh, interesting webinar. We are deeply sorry once again for the technical issues. And unfortunately, it happens sometimes. And uh, you will find uh, the, the presentation of the speakers on the webinars page. Uh, uh, from Monday onwards, and we will also serve with you the recording uh, on uh, on our YouTube channel. And uh, thank you very much. 
Thank you. I would like to thank the Indira researchers for their valuable information and info and everything they shared with us. Uh, everyone, have a nice uh, evening. We hope we you learned something today and something important. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Have Bye. Nice thank day, you everyone. very much to everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Maria Elena, for everything. Thank you for you, European Organized School Education Platform. Thank you. Bye-bye.